So today I've got Martin and Sophie from Ireland um, on the line and we, we're going to have a little chat like we have before. Um, the normal chat, I think about, it's really a Duma conversation again and how to cope with it, especially, you know, people like us who have a, a certain age now. And what we've spoken about before is about the youth response and what it feels like. Uh, you know, from our experience and being older and, and thinking how different we were as, as youths. So certainly that's the way it comes across to me is how different I was as a youth and why the youths of today are not responding in the same way. And it's, I feel a certain bit of frustration. But what, what do you guys think on that topic? I, I think people... In general, people are scared to apart my they prefer not to go. And um, you know, if you don't see it, it's not happening and it's that's true. With the young people I know, is that one of them, my daughter, for example, has children and it, her agenda is it, it there's a kind of there's, yeah, there's there's a denial, total denial, and um, sort of hopes, hope opium, whatever you call it. And yeah, my son, I see a fear, not wanting to address, not wanting to see it, I think. But I, I, I have a funny feeling that deep down, like I was telling you before, um, I have a nephew who's listening to you back in France, he's 28, and he's, I've met him in person a few months ago, and I know he's thinking differently. And he's still in job, he's in media, he's, you know, he's really in, into, into society as it's no, he's not a marginal, he's not like us who have kind of stepped back, you know. So, yeah, I see denied, I see hopes, I see brainwashing, I, I see a lot of young people on social media and I don't know, yeah, you know, disconnected from reality. We're all going to get electric cars and wind turbines and we'll be all fine. Yeah, <laughs> everything buy, will be great. Yeah, yeah, buying the buying the propaganda from from the various states we live in and you know, robbing them in the right direction so that they don't ask too many questions. You see? But they all know underneath that it's all hot watch, right? They they know I think so. I mean, nobody's that stupid that you think we're going to pull through with the Green New Deal and stuff like that, right? Yeah. You wonder sometimes. You're more pessimistic than I am on the human nature. Yeah, I think, I think people will line up when, when nature kind of corners them, but otherwise, they take the easy route in general. The younger people, I think, some of the younger people I've met are, are more aware of it and more worried about it. Teenagers, for instance. Well, the, the, the young women I've been working with, when I was working as a doctor, the young women I had and, and few men I, I was in contact with, some of them would literally have physical reactions of anxiety and and just avert their their eyes if you started talking about this. Certain people, it would just be no, no, I can't go there. I can't handle this. It's going to be okay. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's to that point, it's just, no, 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 you, you, you can't, you have a friend like that, John. John, John is a sailor too, right? He's, he's a guy who's on the sea, like, he's traveled, he's intelligent. But when we, when you, when you go to that subject, mm, it's not happening. It's not, you can't handle it. But it, it was in South Africa, so that's my, my reference point and kind of, you know, I, like I said to you, I've been kind of reliving South Africa and then, I think everybody in South Africa knew where we were headed. I mean, we were headed for genocide. Uh, it was going to be Rwanda-style genocide. It was going to be white people were going to be wiped out. And everybody knew it. Um, they were just in various stages of denial. So it became a, a thing where what divides people is when it's going to happen. So you'd have these, you know, all the spectrum from never in my lifetime to you know, um, and all the way down, um, you know, to you know, oh, it's going to happen in a few years, but you know, there, it's the same with with this kind of collapse denialism. Is is everybody I think would think much the same thing if they thought we were at the same point, 
So if you look at XR and stuff, it's, it's really divided between where people think collapse is. So if, you know, everybody would be an eco-terrorist now if they thought, you know, we had five years before catastrophe. But the problem is that at least half of XR thinks that um, it's, you know, the, the emergencies in 2100, if, if at all. I it's know. Not, it's, I it's, know. And, and also I think the youth don't have a long runway. So they're not, they don't seem to have a lot of depth of history to me. And so they, or it's very superficial. The grasp they have of history is very superficial. So they're not really seeing how, uh, where we are uh, as, uh, you know, how far gone we are because they're not seeing the progression through history to today. They kind of think, it's all, you know, like happened, you know, climate change started in 2018, virtually, <laughs> seems to be, is when they discovered climate change, that's where it seems to start. And, and so... Very short in terms, it's very short term vision. Yeah, but I've been putting things out there, like that Maggie Thatcher speech in 1989, yeah. she was saying yeah. all that stuff, and then... It's crazy. With Greta ...and say, guys, this hasn't changed in decades. You know, it's, it's just because you're a liberal, you woke up this morning, heard about climate change, and now you want to emulate Gandhi. It's like, you want to go back and say, this, you know, you, you, you're kind of doing a watered down version of the 1960s here. This is not 2020, this is 1960 with sugar on top, you know? Well, we, we are, well, I'm 63, I forgot my age. I'm 63 and Martin is 61. So we, we, we've, got, we, we've got a bit of experience. We've had children, we've had jobs, we've been in the world. But I know that our, I was going to say consciousness awakening to, to, to this, this, this crazy world uh, goes back for me anyway. You told me as you were very young. I mean, maybe 14, 15, okay, years old. And in a time where idealism, political ideas, uh, books um, were important and uh, contact with other people. You know, you compare that to a generation that I see now around us, even though we're in the country, we're in a place of privilege. To the, I mean, because we're away from cities and money and a lot of things, but still um, children or young people don't read much, don't assemble, don't, are not interested in politics, are not interested in, it is a very short term attention span. Um, they are, they're, they're really, it's difficult to have a conversation about, about really serious thing with a lot, a lot of them, not saying all of them. We had a young person that was staying here. I thought we do something called uh, help, a bit like woofing, you know, somebody comes in and they do a little job in exchange and they stay for free. It's like couch surfing. Oh, and work, away. And work away. And we had a young girl who came, she was, she was very aware. Remember mm -hmm. Marie? And she, she was talking about how she was preparing and letting go of studying. She was only in her 20s. But she was an exception and she was an extremely calm, introverted person who had been always very much in books. And so she was the kind of exception. But there are very few people now that are telling kids that, you know, your ambition to go to college and get a degree and then set yourself up on a trajectory that was a boomer tra trajectory. And nobody's saying, you know, that that's not realistic. So even things like Greta's school strike, everybody's saying like, well, you should be in school. And you've got to say, why? Why should kids be in school? Nobody wants to ask these kind of questions saying like, what, you know, once you start pulling at some of these threads, like what's the point of being in school now? The whole scheme comes unraveled of, you know. Has there ever been a point? <laughs> yeah, but there are people studying, you know, environmentalism and ecology and stuff and you say, those days are over. I mean, we, we're seeing the end of science in our lifetime. Nobody's going to be doing science after collapse. And so, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's a question that nobody seems to want to ask. No, 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 it's true. And this, this, this is extremely difficult for, 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 for our and, and general mental health of people who are in this kind of doomsphere that you're describing, but 
I mean, you learn to live with it and you have your own coping mechanisms and training and life stories to, to, to do that. But it is, uh, it is, I think it is a very difficult place to be at some time. Very difficult place to be. Yeah. Well, I think people are, people are very badly prepared because in the last 40, 50 years, vegetables have become so mass produced and cheap and artificial. People, like financially, it would be madness to grow your own veg. And uh, people, people don't know how to, they wouldn't know how to survive now. It, it, Ireland would last, I think, three days if the ships ships stop coming in and the trucks stop supplying. Come and take our potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> the fish, the fish will be. So, so actually I'm seeing that already in Greece because there's so much unemployment in Greece. And what, yeah. what everybody does is they go fishing. So, so all the, you know, because the guys, they can't stay in their houses because their wives are like, you know, get out of the blasted house and get a job. <laughs> there aren't any jobs to be had. So what the guys yeah. do is they go fishing. And that reminded me of, I read, when I realized we were, you know, like 2012, I realized things were really bad. I started reading up on collapses and the depression and what people did in the Great Depression. And I was so struck because I, I read that uh, they went fishing. <laughs> that was the, the big thing is, um, you know, off California and stuff is everybody, uh, the one thing that the guys that made money, I think, were, were basically... Uh, fishing trips the guys who went took uh, fishermen out because you know everybody hoped they would catch a fish and that would feed them and uh, yeah but there they weren't that many fish <laughs> they just i don't see many guys catching fish here um well so it's, you know we have plenty so far and they're not toxic it's hopefully the shells and the and the fish we we are still sound. Yeah, but we've given uh, Europe has. Uh, I mean, there's a there's an app called AIS where you can actually see. I think it means it stands for autom automatic identification system. You can see all the boats and identify all the boats that are fishing here. And at the moment, it's Faroese, Norwegian, Icelandic, Spanish, French, Polish, German, and those are enormous. And they have quotas from a lot of the Irish boats have to stay ashore, right in our, on our coast. And it's, it's been manipulated and we, we, we've come out quite badly out of that. But Maybe at the farmer's gain, I don't know. But within 30 years, you have been here now, and Martin knows that because he started fishing as well. Artisanal fishing in Ireland is, is gone. It doesn't exist hardly it, anymore. It, it's, People used to fish from little corrups, you know, little man-made man boats that were wood and tar and canvas, and they used to go out and pull their lobster pots. When I was living on the island where I lived before, that's how we made a living. You had 30 pots, 40 pots, get to get the lobsters, go and put out a net to get a bit of bait, and that's how you were living in your family too. So, and that's it's gone. So now, <laughs> nowadays, you're not allowed to catch your bait because you need a, you need a polyvalent license for that. <laughs> which you can't afford, the, they have to do surveys and get heat curves and DHS and do all the horrible courses, which suits me fine because I run the room. Radio licenses, DSC license, um, safe DSC courses. This is in a basically a robot that um, to go into a little wouldn't have any yeah. potential to make any serious mm -hmm. money, and then you have the navy, which spends its time patrolling those boats in the in by the shore. They they drop a ribbon and police them heavily, whereas there's a so thousands of tons being processed offshore. Uh, they've two bases in this country. I know one of the piers in Kittybeg, we're not allowed on to, we cannot even stand on the pier. There's barriers and all kinds of security for the foreign factory ships. Nobody ever checks their fish. There hasn't been a prosecution on a foreign boat in years and years. And um, years. Hmm. so Basically, even the, the, there's people on the shore as well. If you go and catch a feed of, um, on the spring tide, you get a few scallops, whatever, oh, oysters. Mm -hmm. uh, it cost me 2,000 the last time I had to run into them. 
but we still pouch because I mean, <laughs> you know, that's what you have to do: poaching, smuggling. You know, I mean, that is the only way. Um, but you're not. You're maybe not as anarchist as I am, but you are in a deep down. Well, it's been police. <laughs> it's been it's been police more and more and more. Probably with European money, I would imagine. I'm not sure to look after their own stuff. Yeah. Even the wildlife here, I think we're responsible for 200 miles, and we we are we would be held responsible for the wildlife recitation, quails, dogs, and mm. even seals, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're we're responsible for <laughs> we own 200 miles to protect. We own uh, 12 to fish, barely 12. <laughs> for anything we can take out of it. But, but, but go back to now what you were saying, that island can survive like three days after the ships stop coming. Well, most people, I'd say, that yeah. you might be, there might be one, maybe two, three percent of the population who's self-sufficient in terms of growing their vegetables and, 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 and foraging. When I came to Ireland 30 years ago, it would have been about, I'd say about 40 percent of the population was able, would have been able. Now we've gone down to this urbanization, migration from com local communities, and you know, desertification of the countryside and the regulations. Well, you know, in, um, just just talking about something similar, you know, in um, in California, it's the San Joaquin Valley is really the breadbasket of, uh, of mm -hmm. America, really, and nobody lives on a farm and nobody lives on the fields so i, I did a bit of um uh, works uh, for a farming application basically basically for it was actually insect monitoring so it was these mesh networks to monitoring everything's high tech right mm -hmm. um so i did this tech application for farmers and and so i got to see a little bit of that and i was really astonished that most people think you know, you have Farmer John who lives on a farm and he makes almonds and peaches and stuff like that. And they don't. They live in San Francisco downtown. And the, the, the farmers uh, watch all their fields basically on CCTV. And they really go into the fields. They just go in, um, you know, and they, with combat harvesters and stuff to, to spray and things like that. But um, everything is is done as a commute. They they commute like people do to the office. And so if they if there was say a gas shortage or something like that, they couldn't drive their cars out to their fields. <laughs> the farmers themselves would starve to death in downtown California. In downtown. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I was reading something recently about the, 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 the decline of, of the farming population in the United States over the last uh, 50 or 60 years. It's absolutely incredible. Incredible. It, it, it's 1% in Britain now. And I yeah, think oh yeah. it's around 1% of people are, are farmers involved in agricultural industry. And it, it used to be 50% not that long ago. In the 30s, I think it was around 50%, if I'm not wrong. But no, I, I think in Ireland, if something, if when the shit hits the fan, or if if it's this problem, and there's already there's going to be problems of transport with this virus. It's going to happen. There's going to be. We're in Ireland, and I think there's lots of people who are just going to raid the supermarkets and then starve to death or fight. Because I mean, I don't see how they can. I mean, this they've become totally. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about people I've looked after, patients, people that I've cared for over the years, and I've seen them. I've seen them becoming, from free people, becoming slaves, becoming potential victims of famines and depending on the state and, and everything. It's just terrible. I don't want to talk too pessimistically about a, a, a place I love and I live in, but... <laughs> Anyway, the virus, and we have to ha have to talk about the virus in this. Oh, yeah, have to. Increasingly, I'm I'm considering that um, the virus is is a blessing because yes, yes. it's showing up so many of the things that mm -hmm. people have been saying, um, and no one wants to look at. So, right back to where we started. Liberals are going to be forced to look at the thing. I mean, I was just looking at, I mean, this article came out today in, in, in The Economist saying, hey, maybe it wasn't such a good idea to have, you know, single supply chain from China. 
And so I'm like, no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, oh, really? I wonder, was oh. it the mask that's, uh, you know, behind global? <laughs> like, yeah, but why, why did China do that? Well, don't you remember what you did to China in the 80s? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, complete amnesia about who actually set this up. I you know, know, I know. Oh, I read a very interesting thing about the virus by your friend George. Yes. George. Yes. A little short pamphlet um, on the meaning, and I think you posted it on Reddit actually. He writes really well, that young fellow. I don't know. Yes, yes. Yeah, I must, I must talk to him about that too. I just read it this morning. This morning, the virus is a message from the earth. But it, I think it's going to show us all these things, like it's going to show us um, the shocks in the supply chain and stuff. So it won't be at all bad if people, you know, basically if, there's, if the ships no. do stop coming to, if there's supply chain shocks like, like Mayersk and these, you see, um, yeah. all these things are, quite, are so closely coupled. And I don't think people realize what a delicate Swiss watch this is. So if you look at a company like Mayersk, is they can go downhill and file for bankruptcy. They're, they're not that many shipping lines, you know, um, no. Costco no, no. and uh, Nanjing, all these kind of uh, shipping lines, but not that many. No, and, no, no. And they're monopolies. So if, if two or three of them go into bankruptcy, those ships will be furloughed. There are lots of ships around the world where they are in port and basically the, the shipping company has run out of money and some of these sailors have been there for 10 years in this kind of no man's land on on ships you know indian crews and stuff like that that they can't they can't go ashore because they're not allowed on shore and they the, there's no money to to run the ship um they don't want to leave the ship because they won't get paid that that's common around the world but it could happen you know conceivably to something like two thirds of the of the shipping fleet, if if that happened, I mean it's conceivable. It's not uh, really, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But I think it would be a good thing. Some yes, me too. People have to wake up to a number of things. Is one of the things they need to wake up to is that we can't do permaculture. We can't we can't support ourselves fishing. The vast majority of people in in cities are vulnerable, and there are too many of us. Is the thing that we're going to have to confront, and okay. so I think it's you know I don't see us all tipping over into collapse in a hurry. It it comes in these shocks, you know, bump, 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 and where you get these, you know, looking back there'll be these pivotal points, um, and the virus. And also, you get used to it. Yeah. But, but but they they beneficial because they kind of you know it's lame to say wake up calls. But um, yeah, they they going to. I see the legacy of this virus is going to be big because it's going to force people to confront it uh, where we're at, and to confront the lifestyle, to confront this this worshiping of travel, of tourism, of charters, of of this kind of hyper mobility, um, and that's where the enchantment of connection. That this virus, this virus is showing. It's it's like it's like an enchantment. I, I see suddenly people are starting to say, "Oh yeah, maybe we're not going to have um, a big football match or a St. Patrick's parade in Dublin or big gatherings of people." Except the French, of course, took advantage of that to stop all gathering over five thousand people because they don't want to have the gilet jaune in <laughs> in the streets. Ah, oh, we have the virus, so we're going to say people can't. You know, that's the usual state bullshit. Thing, yeah. you know but that's that's the french you know they, they just yeah. they just cancelled carnival here so all the you know yeah. would be carnival still people yeah. are defying it they're still going out like last night they're still letting off fireworks and stuff but they <laughs> the president or the prime minister in greece said to all the mayors well if you if you have carnival that's fine but uh if a single person gets uh, corona is you get two years in prison <laughs> they <went on>. <laughs> <laughs> so they've kept like like France. They've kept the uh, emergency, um, whatever you call them, uh, emergency uh, laws that were that happened after the first bombs went off. Because a lot of European countries went on this sort of emergency state, 
that enable the police and special measures to be taken against people. And they haven't, they haven't gone. They're still there five, six years down the road. More than that, seven years, I think, they've been in force. I mean, it's every, nearly every European country has them, thanks to the whatever they call them, Islamists. I don't know who did all those things, but that, that's why it happened. You know, and France is in total, France is, it's a total police state now. Fascist. But is, that's where that's where it goes. That that's where it went in South Africa. Is they found that's the biggest reason. They they found excuses to declare martial law, and then it never went away again. It just became the the new normal, and they had extraordinary powers. And of course, they abused them to the hilt. All the people that disappear and fall downstairs and stuff. You know, you have forty people at one police station. You know, fell down the stairs or slipped on the soap in the shower, and that was a famous one. And all of that happened. Martin has to, Martin has to go somewhere. Oh, okay. okay. Um, Somebody the door. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, but um, all of that happened because of special powers. And then once they have that, they can't ever let go of the special powers because what what event happens that makes them say, okay, we'll give up all our power now. Um, we don't need it anymore. Things are back to normal. It never happens. So. So it's a one-way trip, and as it ratchets up, it's just going to get worse. As it unfolds in your book. <coughs> Sorry. As it, un as it unfolds in your book, a little bit at some stage, you know, when you see this, this sudden <clears throat> grip coming on, you know, that it's, but it's there. I know it for a long, long time. A long, long time. Yeah. Mm. But what you get, you get... Um, these fits and starts, and if the virus is one of them, then people might, you know, start to think, is this really the way we want it to go? <coughs> <coughs> Talking of the virus, mine's getting bad. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, I mean, I, I keep on hoping these, these moments will come, and I'm trying my best to, to ferment them, but... Um, it's very, very frustrating. Don't, don't you feel the frustration of the fact that people aren't where I think they should be when they're thinking at all? It's, uh, it's very personally frustrating that everybody's in la la land and you want yeah. to take them awake yeah. and uh, it just doesn't work. You can't do it. So you have to, you have to probably not wake them up and just, um, and just look after yourself and get get strong enough to to accelerate things and and so that you you know i mean that's why i really understand what you're talking about when let's say what can be saved and um you know and just because yeah not not trying to convince people who don't want to be convinced is a waste of time and energy um and and, and let's concentrate i mean of course i i have a good community here and I mean, you can you can plan for a little bit of support for who we need it. You can plan to to, to, to hide people, to keep people. To, that's okay. That would have happened. That would happen anyway. But there's things we can't talk about. On, on life. I think you can. You know, you you could. I think you can talk about a hell of a lot if you don't talk mention specifics. Yeah. Specifics, yeah, yeah, yeah. But one, one thing. That I think, just talking on these lines of uh, full spectrum resistance, is um, if you look at these, and uh, in, in fact, I think all revolutions generally do this in the early stages when the, there's normally a turning point. In South Africa, it was sharp for the and mm -hmm. from there on out, it was this, the writing was on the wall, and then the whole movement starts, and it changes gear in a way. Uh, what what happens is the same thing as it's actually documented in this movie called The Battle for Algiers, which was this. Um, yes, I, I've seen that movie. Yeah, that was like training material Amazing. for a lot of resistance movements, so everything from the Black Panthers to the PLO, I think, were. Do you remember the little triangles? Three people, one person, and you don't, you know, it's kind of that little, how the work, how the, the FLN is working. You know, yeah, there's three people who know one person and that's it. Nobody knows anybody else. 
yeah, how the cells were divided and stuff. But yeah, they, the cells, they did absolutely. that in Ireland too, didn't they? The IRA had cells like that, didn't they? In, in, in Ireland, the IRA had, had that same kind of structure. Yes, 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 yes. And I think they had it in Ireland too. I think, I'm not sure Martin is over there. I could ask him. Martin, sorry, would you come back a second? We were talking about cells in, in, in organizations like uh, the IRA or things. People, the, the cells, were they, were they organized the same way as they were organized in the FLN, the Alger, Algerian thing we were looking at the other day? You know, was it the same thing with people? How were the cells organized? Was it, you know? Mm, you, well, uh, you know what to talk about? It was all kind of closed in the community. There was very little, you know, it was, it was as I said, subversive. So there was, there was no. But the, how was it? Was it? It was. It was. It was bottom up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. From the ground up. From the ground up. But, um, and when somebody was captured, they would be able to, to, to. They wouldn't be able to give up to give names of people. Not not many of them would know who is who is what. I think that's what I gathered from the reading. Yeah. I had from from that time. Yeah, it had to be in yeah but but before when they just getting back to that the movie of the battle for algiers then yeah. um at the beginning of that movie uh there's a pivotal point where they the the revolution gets to into gear and what they do is they go around to all the people and and stop them you know smoking hashish and drinking mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. passing about and I, I think that's um, the first stage. That's what happened in South Africa too. Is is you know everybody's just trying to cope with the really it's structural violence of the system, and yeah. so everybody's you know smoking weed and just doing what they can. And the first thing the revolution does is to go around on the grassroots level and stop people doing all the the negative behaviors uh, like you know escapist behaviors really. Uh, to force them yeah. to, you know, kind of get with the and idea, and I, I'm thinking that that's that's also where we should be. It should be, yeah, but that unleashes terrible withdrawal symptoms. So those people are going to be in an extreme, <laughs> an extreme. <laughs> that's why they do it. If if, <laughs> if you if you say to somebody, look, uh, if you take your drugs away, that's a very pissed <laughs> off rebel right there. <laughs> I know. Wow, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah. isn't that where we were at? I can't, I can't imagine XR should be. But now it's the same thing if you take a mobile phone off a young person. They're going to go into withdrawal symptoms. That's what I'm talking back. about. So, so, so this is where, where I'm going with all of this. You see, what I think should be happening is, you know, people, there's so many EMP devices and stuff online where you... you I I've mean, watched them, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's this stuff like... Um, like TV be gone, you know. This is a thing in the states where you can, it's it's this just one, a power well. device, and you can switch off TVs and stuff like that. And so I'm saying, like, look, why is an XR doing a program like that? Why why are people really walking know. around? You know, where, where the where the games on TV, the big sports games on TV. Yeah. So you, you just switch the TV off with a remote device, and then you um you know basically do a factory reset on it so that the game is ruined and everybody in that pub or whatever is absolutely furious and you know why don't you walk around with them i have absolutely no interest just taking in out people's cell phones till eventually they get the message that you can't buy a cell phone now you spend seven seven hundred pounds on a cell phone and just people walking down the streets with a backpack emp are taking out whole people in a coffee shop it's like in say like yeah, are you getting it now? This is serious stuff. So, so it's like raising awareness is not having a banner. It's causing people wow. to, to lose their crutches, you know, if you kick the crutches out from under them. And the, the worst crutch is the phone. So anything you can do to like jam phones or um, or use um, e devices against them, all that kind of thing. Um, is, I mean, but just, just walking around with, you know, I mean, a, a, a catapult, you know, a slingshot. I know. In, in, in <laughs> South Africa, the, uh, the, the, the whole revolution was fought with slingshots. <laughs> and you know, all the surveillance cameras around the place, all the street lights and stuff is, is like, 
you know, make, make you know, you should be making those guys pay. Make those are expensive bits of equipment, but they can they can leave them out there because people people just wear it. But if if there's an underground campaign to to take those out, I mean, who would have tolerated these things in the 1930s? Who would have been up that pole and taking these things down? You know, so fast uh, during those days, but. People, people have lost that, that kind of um, sense of, of purpose, I guess, or, or you know, sense yes, of Yes, I know. I know. You see, the problem is that we are, like, for example, we are isolated or rural completely in the wild place, and we think about things like that. What well, Our impact of doing things like that here would be local and would be ridiculous. And then you turn to people who are in urban, in urban areas, young people, and they're, they're not... They're not interested in that, so and they depend on it. So sometimes it's a bit, it's a, it's a bit of like, okay, underground campaign, yeah. But who's going to follow an underground campaign like that? The, the few, the few visionaries that understand where things are at. So, so the the mm-hmm. more people that start on a campaign like that, the more I think it would become infectious. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're, it's a bit like the bat- Battle of Algiers sale. It's just you want to start little little groups and let them, yeah, just, you know, yes, and reproduce. It's, it's happening. It's happening already, but I think it's being diverted yeah. by the state. As far as I can see, that um, exile is just controlled opposition. Textbook, you know, basically, it's, it's textbook diversion. What the stuff that they're doing there? I actually went back and looked at a World War II manual on propaganda, and, and they had exactly what XR is. They had a paragraph on exactly how to how to basically divert um, in an in insurgency, and it was just basically a description of XR. <laughs> it was mm. all this great stuff. And so, you know, they've probably infiltrated by a lot, an awful lot of people who have all, all interest is to, to make XR absolutely useless. I mean, I don't think that the people who created XR have been mind to be like that, but they've, they've taken on board such an amount of people who have, whose main aim, I think, is to sabotage the whole thing. Like, I, I told you I've been to a meeting of these people, and it's just what you would, disc- you, with your words, uh, would describe a total alien cortex type of meeting with everything structured, everything you know, nice and tidy and used, and it, it was just blah, you know. <laughs> but it, it, what? But what the manual? Says, <laughs> but but what the manual says is really like uh, Wu Wei. It's kind of like very you know, um, like karate or um, you know uh, that. You, you don't actually oppose the movement. Well, yeah. all, all the all the anti-insurrection manuals. So you you never oppose the movement head on. You must just divert it. So it's it's very easy to divert it into something that's harmless um, yeah. and instead of oppose it. And that seems to be the program going on in XR. But for the for those reasons alone, I think that you know, you the very dynamic they're using that you start to get people involved in activism and st- and then they start to get meaning to life from that and they get community and all of those things that they're using to divert them the same applies if visionaries can say look stop that here start doing this for real if you, if you start doing a campaign where even if it's just you know putting crap inside fuel tanks of cars and figures and stuff on the road. Yeah, that, that reminds me of something I read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, but you see, that this, I mean, we, we are being poisoned by these machines and they, you know, people let them drive past them in the street. Oh, yeah. It's crazy, it's yeah. like, do something, damn it. But if, I think that if you, if, a little bit starts it'll be like its own drug because it's very very empowering it's if if you get mm-hmm. if you get attached to the adrenaline rush of just taking a, a catapult and taking out street lights and things like that i mean if you did just take an emp device take out a substation or an electrical substation or something like that it, it becomes yeah. very intoxicating for its own self it, it's it's kind of like um, the arsonist drug you know the once the arsonists are very dangerous for the state because once people start arson, 
they they get very attracted to the high that it gives the sense of power the rush and so mm -hmm. and so it's i think the same way a drug culture expands i think a culture may, of opinion resistance maybe you can try to tap into this in a uh, in a need that a lot of people that live in the business as usual world might have deep down there it might be a, a deep subconscious or unconscious um, need to do that when you see the type of games they're playing and the type of movies they're watching you wonder if psychologically there's not this kind of need to just destroy this all this hype oh there is. there is i mean but it's being diverted into games and stuff yeah 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 but you could can you you know it's it's easy to divert it again into other things that's what i think it's such a impulse that's what I think. I think there, there's a big mass of people that think, well, this is an insoluble problem. And then like Gail Bradbrook is running around trying to find the co code for social change and say like, no, it's not as big a problem as you think. I mean, XR and the people in XR have, have more than enough resources to get going uh, with an underground movement. Because the thing is to get people to just do that one little thing, just something at work, to just that little bit of destruction, that little bit mm. of montage. Um, and once they start, I think it'll snowball for them personally and just for, for other people, they'll um, be, be saying, you know, to their friends and families and stuff, it's just, just try this, just do one little thing, see how damn good you feel. <laughs> It'll be the first thing you've actually yes. done for the planet yes. in your life. That's something very important, actually. That's very important. Something I haven't been thinking of enough that. Yeah. How good you feel about doing something. But, well, I know. Roger Hallam mentions it, but he, but the the disconnect there is it's all dysfunctional. It's, you know, it's how how good you feel about self self harm. It's really about getting getting arrested or something like yeah. um, you know going yeah. on a hunger strike. And, and you can go and write a book in prison. That sort of shit. Yeah, but he he's saying that then that that gives you a high. Getting arrested gives you a high. It's like, but that you know, sure, going on a hunger strike gives you a high, but that's not the way you should be getting the high that's the wrong drug you should be getting a high for doing something effective well if bobby sands hadn't gone on hunger strike there would be a lot of changes yeah. and it wouldn't have happened in ireland too so it can't be completely it can't be completely yeah. disregarded either. it's it's one thing if you're bobby sands in the maze um there's very little options you can do and they took them they did riots and stuff like that but yeah. But I mean, for people voluntarily going down to their local council and you know doing a hunger strike in in front of the local councillors, no. it's like, what's the point of that? Or, or a play? <laughs> or or right? Sorry. Play. You know, a play with costumes. Oh, and the cosplay. And, oh, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, this. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, if you slash his tires or like uh, you know disable his car, well, I think he's going to be taking you a lot more seriously. Than I know, but we are back to the fact that we, well, you are younger. I think you're about ten years younger than I am, um, by what I heard in your videos. But we're yeah. still looking at actions that sometimes um, we, we're probably going to have to get out of our of our age group and comfort life to to do ourselves. Because I don't. A lot of people in their twenties or thirties or even teens would be interested in, in that sort of thing at all because they are much more conventional than we are. I mean, I I think I told you the first time I talked to you um, a few nights ago that I sometimes really do feel old with younger people. Uh, I feel young with and, and younger people are old. Do you know when I'm talking to them? I, Oh yeah, yeah. They seem terribly old to me. They seem like old conservative fuddy duddies to me. <laughs> Go that we have, and we are a little bit not as physically good as they are, but they're quite good. But it looks like it's going to be people of our age group, and not the the people that could, you know, be out at night and. Wearing balaclavas and going around with catapults and, and uh, devices. It makes all the sense in the world for us to do it because. Oh yeah. We've got we've got far less to lose. We've, we've yeah yeah. We've lived oh, yeah. Lives. And um, yeah, and also, 
we we less detectable as well. I think yeah. I think you know young young people in a balaclava are a target for the police. But if you they are if you if you're older you're given a free pass if you if you're yeah. a white older person i can go out with my knitting needles and pretend that i'm a little behind but the, the cold war that the most uh, effective saboteurs and that were little old ladies <laughs> well look at the women in the battle of algiers who were carrying the, the you know yeah, yeah. the women have always played an important uh, role in that way in, in insurrections mm -hmm. they're kind of indispensable because there's there's also another thing that it, you know if you they have a kind of immunity if, if uh, the police come down too heavily on old women um, you know a lot of people would step out of the line in the public to defend a little old lady they wouldn't I, I really have to I, I really have to apologize for Martin disappearing but his sister and his mother arrived at the door without I didn't know so he's just over there with them welcoming them so he couldn't join us again for the conversation okay Oh, okay, yeah, so... Sorry, so, right. it's just unexpected visitors. Oh, no, 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 no trouble, no trouble. Oh, yeah. that's, that's a nice surprise, but he has to just go. Um, oh, but but do, you have to, do you have to go now? No, no, it's okay. I'm fine. I'm fine, but Martin is going to stay over there with them for a while. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, so, yeah, no, so we'll, we'll talk again, but, but... I hope so. So anyway, that's... We're just talking about the coping strategy of just, just doing something destructive is, um, is, is the most constructive thing to do at this stage. Mm. But I think, don't you get the feeling that the youth of today, they've been a, kind of indoctrinated that you've got to yes. be constructive. And it's yes. like, no, no, very often you have to be destructive. It's not always helpful and hopeful and positive and constructive and say, no, that's dysfunctional at, in a time like this. But having grown up in the 60s and 70s with a very conventional upbringing and being kind of trying to bend me to the rules of society yeah. and me reb, rebe a rebel against all this, I find that with, well, having brought up kids later in the 90s, I find that you are faced with a to totally different thing where your kids were totally domesticated and, and controlled by by the ambient atmosphere, and you were trying to instill in them some kind of <laughs> rebellious <laughs> um, instinct and stir it up and show them. But no, the outside plus media, etc., were, were, were conspiring to, 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 to annihilate any effort that you could put in trying to tell them to rebel against what was around. So I, I'm, in, I'm comparing those, my, my youth and their youth, I mean, saying the youth of today, but the youth of today. The youth of today is, is I, I often think that I'm with pensioners, really, who are, who are very docile and, you know, wanted. Now, that brings me back to this virus thing, because suddenly that is, that is a new thing on the, on the radar. They, they are not prepared for a dysfunction like that. They're not going to be able to go on holidays, maybe, or skiing in Italy or something, you know, that sort of thing. And what is that going to create? You know, I don't know. I'm observing. I don't know. I, I think it can only do good. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you but among, among the youth, among the young people, they are the ones who are the less exposed to death. They are the, the, the children, the young babies, the, the babies and, children, and the children from nine, there's no death. Yeah. From nine to, to eighteen, and there's a tiny not point three percent or something like that, and it it actually it, it, it grows like that. So the young people are not threatened in their life by that; they're threatened in their lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the 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 little start on little things of of disobedience, which I think is has a different characteristic to what XR is doing now, and I mean so. It's got to be underground and it's got to be devious and it's got to be kind of malicious. And then that's, yes. that's the yes. thing that gives you the, that feeling of disobedience. This thing in XR where you, you know, you're all up front and noble and it's above ground uh, rebellion and you own up to what you do and all of this stuff. And it's like... And you do selfies and you put it up on social media. Yeah, and it's 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 like no, it's, that's all wrong. You know, it's it's you're not, you're not getting this feeling of 
insurrection of, of disobedience to authority. In, in other way, in some ways, it's reinforcing your, um, your compliance because you're complying with all of, you know, everything uh, that the social order tells you, except in this one tiny respect. And then yeah. so it's, it's okay. making a token mark that you you're on a bridge and it's not really all that bad yeah. so, so it and and then you get a slap on the wrist so it's kind of like you know uh, it's the equivalent of saying you know it's like not tidying up your room oh. as a protest against your mother and it's like it's like this is not going to go anywhere it doesn't yeah, feel, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't get it doesn't inculcate this feeling of rebellion against parents and uh -huh. uh, yeah it's what would make you feel much better about uh, your rebellion against parents is if you started to do real destructive stuff and then, you know, yeah. you involve other people. But, yeah. 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 I, but I, I'm not hearing this. Um, are, are you hearing? I mean, I'm looking for stuff and you can look on the Annika sub and you can look at... I know. You, it's, I have it's, you know, green, deep green resistance and these guys, they're, they're people out there that um, are doing stuff, but it's, it's, I think that's also peripheral. If you go and- but how, how do we know really? Because if we're what we're talking about, about acts of rebellion are happening in the way that they should be happening, how could we find out? Because if they're really doing it the right way, they're not gonna be on some, so they're not gonna be on, on, on YouTube, and they're not going to be anywhere. They're just doing the little thing, you know. Uh, uh, they are doing a little thing, but the way you find out is by looking at the at um, all the, at the level of destruction at the A cab. So if you look up eco terrorism, and yes, there's lots of literature on it, but there, yes. there's so much talk in the FBI and so much preparedness for eco terrorism. It's out of all proportion to the actual okay. ecotourism. So they reckon that it possibly there's been a hundred, a hundred million um, in damages they reckon since 2008. So from 2000, so in the last 10 years or so, there's probably been a hundred million in damages for ecotourism in the states. To, to. Uh... Um, wood companies and, and yeah, mainly oil companies and right, pipelines. Right, spiking trees and basically yeah. whole pipelines and stuff. But it's, it's yeah, yeah, I know the the stuff of deep green resistance. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's virtually nothing, and it's and it's so kind it doesn't of, disrupt anything. It doesn't yeah. disrupt anything. That's, right, that's, it's it's it it's doesn't disrupt it's disrupt yeah. the industrial um, machine. Yeah, and, and in terms of of the cost, if you think. You know that's uh, that's like ten ten million a year. You can disable one one combine harvester. That would be the ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's virtually nothing. Now compare that to what the state has spent. It spent almost almost a trillion dollars in anti-terrorism. In that. Yeah. So so the asymmetry is is absolutely huge. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I would expect by now, where, where, where things are at, is particularly inside the military to have, for them to have a problem. But you're not seeing it. No, no. There, but there, there must be, you know, in every army, there are a lot of disaffected people, especially after you've had a false war in Iraq, and you've had, you know, these guys in Afghanistan. And what those guys, you know, the, they they learn what, what the game is and they learn how they've been suckered by the system to go out and have to suffer. Mm. And then they come back disaffected. And then they they become revolutionary. So there, there are a lot of vets and there are a lot of disabled vets, a lot of vets that are shortchanged by the VA. Um, but there's there's very little culture of resistance. There's a culture of oppression, there's a culture of substance abuse. But the culture of resistance, the culture of resistance, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not much. But the potential, it's not much strong. Potential is vast. Yeah, but by by definition, the lone, lone wolves cannot be really um, gathered like online and canvassed for and called out. They emerge, don't they? I wonder sometimes if it's not. 
spontaneously something that you're going to have to accept that it's not that you're not going to be able to, to really um organize or in you know it's it's going to that that's where i'm and i'm listening to you a lot on that subject because people like us who have a, a will and a and a, and a and a and a feeling of resistance and and, and a deep i mean a deep something really deep in there but i i, I feel that i'm i'm blocked against a how how do how do you process all that? How do you is it is it is it impossible? Are those do we have to wait for these things to spontaneously emerge? No. Can we entice? Can we do this? No. So, so, so the, what what I believe is uh, what 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 we need to to do is to legitimize it, to talk about it, and legitimize. Yeah. It. yeah. So it's it's uh, you know. It really okay. emerges. You can't organize a lone wolf campaign. No, no. But, but by you, definition. Yeah, but you you can start um, the you know, well, well. You can basically uh, plant the seeds for uh, the the kind of insurrectionary thought, so that and stories. The stories are important. The Maybe write another book. <laughs> ah. Uh, well, about wolves. <laughs> that's yeah. That's the kind of thing is is, is to or a video game. <laughs> well, was is to go back and and talk about the 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 rebels and to talk about the slaves and the the yeah. revolts. Yeah. To yes. I think that the that the old memories can be revived through, through storytelling. I think storytelling is a very powerful medium. Powerful. And and that, that I think can can you know start to um, you know stoke the embers um, the you know the things like and the young. songs and myth and stories yeah. are what it's all about. So I think people like us have an important role, and especially people in Ireland, who it's also re recent <laughs> and. and there's uh, you know still a memory in the songs and the rebellious spirit is 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 and Sinn Fein has just got the majority in the election. <laughs> it, well it's that's a sign that it's coming back, isn't it? It's there's people people are disaffected, but they need to have a voice what's uh how how to express that disaffection and so if you if you say the way to express your disaffection you go and you know sabotage something then uh i think that people will go yeah you know that makes sense and also there's that deep pleasure to the yeah. sense of, <laughs> you know i'm i'm not powerless it's basically that, that, yeah, they, it's so nice to come yes over a sign that says keep off the grass and saying like who are you yeah. tell me this is not your grass it's our grass i'll stand on it one that's one once you once you unleash that that spirit i think it's a tidal wave in that oh yeah but that's that's the natural human I mean, that is so so it's what they're doing is they they're bottling it up so they they're bottling up the rebellious spirit and i it's coming under pressure now so I think the value that people like us can do is, is help uncork it. Okay, that, that, that's really good. That's something that I'm going to keep <laughs> uncorking. I'm going to think of this bottle of champagne that's being shaken and shaken and the cork is there and somebody's going to just... <laughs> yeah, yeah well, well, that's what agitation <laughs> is. It's shaking the bottle. You <laughs> don't have to shake it too much anyway. <laughs> Exactly what agitation the temperature. <laughs> agit pop, agit pop, you know. <laughs> but yeah, help help us uncork and help help the young people and old people uncork this this natural and and I would say healing rebellion. It is you not see, not this. this is, you see, well, this is the one thing. That, uh, that I spend a lot of my time on on Reddit and stuff beating my head against. And it's this kind of defeatism and, and these people saying, well, what's it going to do? It's not going to make a difference. We can't say, that's not the freaking point. 
The point is no. how you feel about it is it makes you feel so much better. It's, it's like saying yes. we're, we're on the Titanic. Going and yeah. going and doing that is not going to help save the Titanic. Say, look, the Titanic is sunk. We're dead. Do you want to save the Titanic? Really? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, look, make it as red. Collapse is coming. We're all dead. We're probably going to go extinct. That's not the point. The point is how you feel about it, what you do about it. And say, so like, going and kicking the kicking a dog or basically stringing up the captain of the ship, it's not to save the ship or for justice. It's just because we're human, and that's what you yes. do. <laughs> yes, but you see, the, the, there is also in a lot of those uh, songs that you mentioned, and also in Extinction Rebellion, exact a confusion between the... The, the destiny of our planet and the destiny of our civilization and and a lot of people out there that what they want what, what is what is really pissing them off and making them really sick is this civilization going they're not it's not just the planet as our support system as our, as our body but it's it's their it's their life it's their civilization and that is why i i find that a lot of those people are insipid because they, what they want is to keep what we what we well, you know, what we have, and maybe we do a bit of permaculture and and a little bit of yoga and a little bit of maybe recycling and things like that. But as long as we keep the civilization, the, the focus is not on on, on, on this beauty, on, on this on, on, on everything we have, but can be can maybe some of it that's spared, you know? Yeah, yeah. And and. Uh, but there's the, far too much focus on civilization right and there's this this it's not only the beauty outside it's the beauty inside of people inside, too. Yeah. so it's, it's the humanity of people is is the beautiful part of people and you know, are it's kind of impetus to become cyborgs and be you know it's yeah, it, it's like okay i, I want to say something really harsh now but the but you always get to the point where where people say, well, if there's so many people surviving on on civilization, you can't get rid of it. We're kind of we're in for a penny, in for a pound. Now we're riding the state. We're on the civilization bus. We can't get off because people are going to die. And and this is what I want to say: is let them die. There's so many people that are not really people. That we're, that civilization is turning us into machines. What what people are becoming robots and, and yeah. if people want to become robots switch them off switch them off yeah. if somebody wants to become a cyborg even to the point where it's saying like oh no i could never use an emp device on the street because you know somebody's got a pacemaker so like collateral damage man it's 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 the, the i know it, it, yeah. it is if you know there's there's a guy in belgium He's been rent his life now. I think in Belgium or Holland. But anyway, you're not going to die. This pacemaker goes off for it. And why? They can just go and they can have it fixed. It's not going to kill somebody to have a, an EMP stopping a pacemaker. In You'd have to have, stop it just when he's going in arrhythmia. The chances well, would be. Well, this this is the thing. But the the the, <coughs> the but the bigger principle is we have to separate ourselves from the saying just there's a simple rule that we need to establish and they're saying if your life is predicated on the existence of our tech society you're already dead yeah. this tech society cannot carry on yeah we we can it's basically we just climb us on a on a cliff face and you're hanging on the edge of a rope that is cut. We're going to have to cut because you were saying you you were you were saying the same thing to Hank a few days ago. I listened to it. I listened to it a few days ago. It might have been a few weeks ago. It was one of those those interviews about Greg that at the end we were talking about this. We were talking about when the pandemic is going to happen in cities and one of the people that would that have the best chance of surviving are the ones that have no electricity but are grid, probably in Africa or some parts of South America. Uh, you know, uh, and I, I totally agree with this. I must say, totally agree with. This. So, so, so that we have to. Maybe that's the thing that we can do is, is 
is is surface this as a topic of discussion and 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 basically forcefully put an argument to say that like you know we we if you know there's a lot a big thing to say well that's an ableist thing so you know what about people in in wheelchairs and stuff and saying look saying look we cannot keep tech society going to keep you in your wheelchair if if tech society if you're relying on tech society <coughs> tech society is a crutch i'm sorry but you know um and and i you know you you're gone and say because tech society is not going to last much longer and we, no. we can't preserve it just for you and i i mean i'm if and we I, all have to be cops, right? yeah i mean if if i'm on the life support system um or in an icu and somebody walks past with an emp device doing some kind of sabotage i say that's the way i want to go <laughs> yeah 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 it's agree like, agree agree if, if mm. we, we have to agree as a people to say that we are not going to let this evil machine keep us alive if we get to that stage we are dead uh you know it's basically saying like you know uh we need nazi germany because you know they're paying me a paycheck and without it i'll starve to death yeah. if you take exactly the same nazi germany you deserve yeah. to wake up right now yeah. <laughs> but i think this is the kind of stuff that i think we we could say but but just that that guy in the cyborg guy and uh, i never finished that thought in in holland is that, that guy's registered as a cyborg now and he's saying like look if there are people that are walking down the street as cyborgs i want an emp device i want to kill those bastards i really want it really is if you elon musk or any of these guys putting implants in you or putting silicon in your head you wait for my emp i'm, I'm gonna purge i'm not a eugenicist but i'm a anti-roboticist and if you want to be a robot i'm gonna switch you off just I, I just make it my mission in life to to yeah, anybody that has bits of electronics in your head or whatever is like mm -mm, man that, I, we're gonna switch those off man we we you don't want to go there you're starting to do funny little things your the video stops now and again your your sound goes off I, we we have a we have a very slow connection, so it gets. No, no just now recently, yeah. just started there. You were interrupted for maybe two three seconds, you know. Oh yeah, I have I have a little I have a little joke about this for um with me. If ever you start talking about the machine, electrical <laughs> <like your> problems. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. All right, so EMP. Well, I've looked at those videos of guys making them. I'm not a tech, oh my god, trying to build up those things. I don't think that's I think it's right. Let's some that's some funny things. <laughs> um, it's young people actually who are making the video. So. Mm -hmm. Do you think XR would like to do workshops on that? Yeah, <laughs> that would be the first decent workshop. <laughs> yeah, or volunteer to organize a workshop. <laughs> Electronic. You can just do it with videos. I mean, everybody. I mean, all it is is directing people to the videos these days, right? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, there's a big pattern that if I say anything controversial or or anything like full spectrum resistance, nobody touches it. It gets it gets a lot of reads. Yeah. Nobody, yes. nobody will upvote. No, everybody's. But it shows that people are aware of the amount of surveillance. <laughs> no, but that's not really how surveillance works. <laughs> that's, no, 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 you're right. You're right. right. They've got the wrong idea about how surveillance works. Yeah. Yeah, but you're lucky to have this background of and this knowledge and all these things. But the common people don't know that knowledge. Most I, I'm very, I'm very, uh, very, uh, very basic knowledge of uh, even of computers and everything. But to know about surveillance and, and intelligence and all these things, 
you have to have been quite uh, inside the system and in the machine to know all this, honestly. I mean, it's just really for the ordinary people. I mean, pe people have got the basics of it, so everybody knows what it is to live in 1984. I heard that in in yes. in, in, in people still read you, but not people, not many people still read George Orwell. Not many people uh, still it should be. You know, I mean, you, you're talking about the new world. What's I did more books, and most of my friends and my friends did more books than me. But how many of us are there to read? I, 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 went, I went back in just 10 years ago. I mean, I did 1984 at school and I, I went back 10 years ago and read read it again. It was like I, know. Book. And I went and back and read um, Homage to Catalonia. Yes. Nobody reads that one. <laughs> I, have it, I have it over there actually. I was taking notes on it yesterday. I, I think I said in one of my videos that the reason why they they teach you 1984 in school is so that you don't find homage to Catalonia. <laughs> it's it's to, to, again the diversion to get you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, but I, I've heard that XR actually puts the phones in you know they make it if they sent you know discussing sensitive stuff they make everybody put their phones down in another room in a Faraday box or. <laughs> <laughs> well, you only have to get a microwave and stick it in. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to stop this session now. But I'd like to. I'd love to continue to talk to you, even off recording. Like so, uh, I'm going to have to join the family over there. Well, yeah, well, it's been it's been so nice to talk to you, and thanks thanks to Martin. It's so. such a pleasure to talk to you. You don't know it really is really is. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you too. And, okay, all the best to you and enjoy the rest. All the of best, and I, I'm looking forward to our next meeting. Okay, and Martin, Martin, he wants to say goodbye to you because um, I was not really you know. Sorry, I'm sorry I'm you had to, I had to escape there for a while. That's all we all important stuff. I have to escape. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you, you're doing all the important stuff, so don't don't yeah, let yeah, me interrupt yeah. you. <laughs> We're going to do this again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, take care and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Go to Greece. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.